Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another plan with me video and in today's video we are going to be using the Always Fully Booked Planner, although this video could also be used with the Novel Companion and I also have a printable for what we're going to be doing today. So it doesn't matter if you have the planner or not, you can still follow along. This is going to be a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of a time lapse, but basically I'm going to be showing you how I use the blank bookshelf page in the planner. This is the page, I've already started coloring it because I kind of wanted to figure out what I was gonna do. There's a lot of different ways to use this page. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but I thought I would show you how I use my planner and how I color it in. It is a little bit excessive and it does take quite a bit of time. So if you don't like coloring, this probably isn't the method for you. I like to make mine really bright and vibrant. I do spend quite a bit of time on this page. So that's what we're going to do today. I am using the Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils. These are my favorite. This is the 72 pack tin. I find that they blend the best out of every pencil crayon that I have used. Before we get started on the books, I thought I would explain how I colored in the bookshelf here. So for the actual bookshelf, I wanted it to look a little bit like a wood texture. So I actually found this technique from one of my followers on Instagram. I will leave a link to her account down below. It is a bell in the bookshop. If you want to see hers, be sure to go check out her Instagram. I will also explain it here. So I am using, if you have the 72 pack of the Prismacolor Premier pencils, I am using dark umber, light umber, and metallic gold to do this bookshelf part here. My process for doing this is I take the dark umber and I make sure I always have a pencil sharpener nearby and I like to keep them pretty sharp at all times. All I do is I start doing this kind of pattern. I go back and forth. I press really hard when I'm using colored pencils because I want it to be as smooth as possible and these are really buttery so it works really well but I basically make this like C shape almost like a, this is a backward C but then you can also do a forward C and I just kind of fill it in like that and then here kind of do the same except I go with the flow of the panel. So like these ones are going down, so we'll do it down, but these are going across, so I do them across. So I just keep doing this. I'll do something kind of like that. I do adjust like as I go if I think it needs a little bit more of the dark brown. I'll add it in later, but after that I take the light umber and then I kind of am pretty random about this one and I kind of just like add in little sections kind of blending a little bit as I go. I do it on like either side and I kind of just make like little patches of this one. There's not really a whole pattern for this. You'll start to see that it blends really well together as you go. So just gonna do this one and as I said I'm using quite a bit of pressure because um, I find that they blend the best if I do that. I'm not filling in every area. Right, once I have a little bit of that done I'm gonna switch over to the metallic gold and this one is extra buttery and smooth which is why they blend so well in the end. So essentially I just take this one and I go over all the extra spaces and make it all blend together. kind of see that I want to add a little bit more of the other brown so after I finish doing all of these sections I'm going to grab the other two browns and kind of start blending them together until I find a pattern that I like. After you have the initial layer down like right now I'm not pressing as hard because I want more of a blending rather than like a really solid line so 
I'm just going over these dark patches just to add a little bit more. And if I think that there's an area that could use a little bit more, I'm just gonna cast, do a light little layer. And same with this light brown, I'm gonna go over a couple of areas until I get it to be the amount that I want. And that's essentially it for the wood texture. It's just all about blending and pressure and making sure that you have a balance of all three of the colors. Once you get over to this little area with the metal foil here, it can be a little bit tricky, so I tend to like push one to the side until I can get in there. Actually, you could even just leave it if you don't want to go all the way over. Anyway, so here's a look at how I do the wood texture. So next we're going to move on to the background behind the books. So for this section, we're again going to be using and blending three different colors. Again, I got this technique from the Instagram account, A Bell on a Book Shop. I will leave a link to her below, but it works really well, which is why I've adopted it. So I'm going to be using 20% warm gray. That's the lightest one. Next is 50% French gray. That's the mid-tone. And for all of the dark areas, it's the 70% French gray one. This is actually kind of the same concept in that you just have to have pressure and a lot of blending. But I'm going to start with the darkest color, 70% French gray. And I'm just going to kind of do like an outline. So wherever I think it would be a little bit darker, so like up in this corner here, corners are always a little bit darker, I'm just going to add a little bit of that and then same with along the edges of these books the edges of the books are going to create a little bit of a shadow so i am going to just use this and i'm just using really small motions going back and forth until i get it all covered up and again using the pressure not being afraid to lift up my pencil and get in those corners i'm just going to create this little shadow I'm going to go along the top here because there would be a shadow underneath of that shelf. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I like to work in little sections instead of doing the whole thing at once. So we're going to go about there. Then I'm going to pick up our mid-tone color, which is the 50% French gray. And I'm kind of going to just blend into that shadow color we made, going over quite a bit of it and blending outwards to make a smooth transition into the lighter color. And this one I'm using kind of like circular motions to try and blend. If you find you're getting a lot of like kick up from the pencils, you can always blow it off. I wouldn't recommend dusting it off because you'll smear it. And then I'm going to take our lightest color, which is the 20% warm gray, and I am going to fill in the areas. There's quite a bit of a transition between this one and the mid-tone color we're using, so I am going to go back into the mid-tone and blend it better. But for now, I'm just going to lay the color down and then we can blend after. And you can bring this right into the shadows because it will help blend it easier. And I'm going to go back into that mid-tone color and I'm just going to do really, really light. Hardly any pressure in those circular motions again just to try and make an easier transition into that lighter color because there is quite a big difference between the two. So something like that. And then I will just continue the process until we finish the back of the shelf as well.
So there you have it. There's a look at how I do the bookshelf part in the background part. It's actually relatively simple. I really enjoy coloring, so I put a little bit more effort into it than you actually need to. You could just color the book, so you don't have to go this far in depth. That is just what I do, and I've said this a few times, but I'm gonna say it again. Your planner is yours to enjoy coloring, and this make, kind of thing makes it more stressful for you, then don't do this. You could just write the names of the books in if that's all you wanna keep track of, or you don't even have to use this page. Your planner is yours, and it is meant to be enjoyed and loved, and if you don't find enjoyment in doing this kind of thing, then don't do it. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to use every single page in the planner, and you can make it as extreme or simplified as you want. It's whatever works best for you. I enjoy doing this, so this is what I do. There's no requirement for you to do this kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. Just make sure you're having fun and enjoying the process. Moving on to the coloring. I read five books in January, so I'm going to color them in here. I do have the books actually sitting in front of me just so I can see the spine. So when I'm coloring, I like to kind of go off the colors of the spine. So the first book that I read in January was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So I've got some purple and uh, my black pencil crayons here and so I'm just going to work on the background. I usually do the backgrounds first and then I write in the name of the book afterwards. Or if you do decide to color with colored pencils first, just keep in mind when you write the name over top that ink will need to dry longer than you are used to. So if you have a pen that's like a quick drying pen that you use to write over top of, the fact that you're writing over top of colored pencils will mean that it needs a little bit more time to dry. There have been countless times where I've done a title and then I've forgotten to let it sit and it ends up smearing. So you can learn from my mistakes and just after you write a title and try not to touch it or go near it and let it dry completely, especially if you're using any kind of gel pen. The spine of the Skyward book actually has like a face on it, which I am really, really terrible at drawing faces. So I'm not going to do that, but I am going to base it off the colors, which is kind of like a galaxy purple. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And then I'll write the title in. So feel free to do whatever you want if you're filling in yours. If you wanted to just do a solid color, or even if you wanted to do like a color coding system of genres on your bookshelf. You don't have to do it this way. A lot of people have different systems, so you can come up with your own system, whatever works best for you. Anyways, I'm going to continue coloring in all of the titles of all of the books I read, and I will add in the titles at the very end. I like to do all of the coloring all at once, so that once I do the titles, it has time to dry before I move on to the next book. Moving on to getting ready to do the titles, I have a couple of different supplies I like to use. One of my favorites is the Le Pen. I have this in black. I also have a variety of other colors that I like to use when doing titles. So I have this gold gel pen. It's just a uniball gold gel pen. If I need gold on a book cover, I will use this one. It does need a bit of time to dry, so that one smears more than other ones. Similarly, I have white gel pens. These also need more time to dry, so 
just keep that in mind. But I have a Jelly Roll and a Uniball white gel pen. And then I haven't used these before, but I might test them out. It's the Tombow Twin Tone. One end is like a thick marker, but then the other end is this really, really thin tip. So I might try those. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the middle snap. So whatever system you end up doing for your bookshelf page, whether you use it or don't use it, whether you have a genre system or you color it in kind of like mine, I hope you enjoy the process and I hope you enjoyed this little mini time lapse slash tutorial showing you how I use mine. This is one of my favorite pages to fill in and I've had a lot of requests asking how I do it when I show pictures on my Instagram. So I thought I would film something just so you guys could kind of get a look at my process in case you wanted to take some of the tips or techniques that I have used. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video and I hope it really helped you. I'd love to know how you fill in your blank bookshelf. So be sure to leave a comment below letting me know what you like to do. And if you're not already, I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Also, be sure to let me know what other Plan With Me videos you'd like to see, if there's a particular page you'd love to see in the comments below as well. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.